Ladies and gentlemen, I had a segment all recorded, but this just came out, and it's fantastic, fantastic news. You know how Democrats who didn't care that, um, oh, I don't know, their, their nominee in 2016 had so endless, endless conflicts of interest, I mean, pertaining to financial conflicts of interests, uh, conflicts of interests associated with their foundation, and you never heard anything about the emoluments clause. NPR appeals court orders dismissal of emoluments lawsuit against Trump. This was nothing more. They knew President Trump had businesses, and they didn't care when money from Uranium One executives went into the charitable foundation of Bill and Hillary Clinton, and just miraculously, President Obama didn't veto the sale of 20% of U.S. uranium capacity. The emoluments clause wasn't an issue then. It wasn't an issue then when you had... Corporations, all oh, 500 conflicts of interest that we found out from the campaign emails, that we found out from one person who worked at Madam Cyberhack's charitable foundation, where they're enriching themselves from their philanthropic endeavor. We can go on forever. I mean, UBS, Boeing, Uranium One, I mean... The weapons deals, Haiti, we can go on forever. Appeals court dismissal of emoluments lawsuit against Trump, NPR. Federal appeals court rules for Trump in emoluments case. Court tosses suit alleging Trump violated the Constitution with political uh, hotel guests. But you have a situation here where... Every single thing they, okay, they went after him to try to frame and set him up, say that he worked with Russia, didn't work out, didn't work for them. The evidence was not sufficient to charge anyone associated with Trump or President Trump with interfering in the election or being, uh, or a campaign finance violation or any contacts with Russia. So when they say, well, contacts, contacts, contacts. Yeah, they, they, Clinton's had a contact. Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin. Uh, thanks, Vladdy. I can't tell you how happy I am. That, that caviar was fantastic. Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin. So you can take... Uh, your your whole contacts and ties and links nonsense and place it where the, sh the sun don't shine. But this is fantastic. I'll read this. NPR Appeals Court. Appeals Court orders dismissal of emoluments lawsuit against Trump. A constitutional challenge to President Trump's continued ownership of his businesses has been ordered dismissed by Federal Appeals Court. The case was brought by attorney, attorneys general of, of Washington, D.C., and Maryland. I mean, it's like unbelievable. You have of Washington, D.C., and Maryland. You know, you have, you have political machines. It's not like, where are, the, where are the lawsuits from attorney generals who obviously see pay-to-play schemes with the Clintons? I mean, you, don't, you just don't see this. But anyway, the case was brought by Attorneys General of Washington, D.C. and Maryland, arguing the Trump, that Trump had violated the domestic and foreign emoluments clause, clauses of the U.S. Constitution by accepting money from state and foreign governments. Hello? One million dollars for five minutes of Bill's time? And my time is precious. That was in the campaign emails. And the interesting thing is, is like, you know, the DNC and campaign emails are actually written by, like, they're, they're pristine. They're actually pristine information written by Clinton Foundation officials, by Madam Cyberhack, by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, by all, uh, Cheryl Mills. Uh, by all of them. It's, 
it's it's unbelievable. Anyway, um, had violated. Okay, so the case was brought. Okay, U.S. by accepting money from state and foreign governments via uh, his Washington hotel and business empire. A three-judge panel at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit ruled unanimously that the attorneys general did not have the standing to bring the lawsuit and instructed a lower court to dismiss the lawsuit. Judge Paul uh, Namir wrote in the opinion, quote, the district and Maryland's interest in enforcing the emoluments clause is so, so attenuated and abstract that their prosecution of this case readily provokes the question of whether this action against the president is an appropriate use of the courts, which were created to resolve real cases and controversies between the parties. <laughs> In other words, they're like, yeah, you're doing this to just hurt Trump. That's it, really. <laughs> you're only trying to hurt Trump. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Do you understand? Stormy didn't work. Russia didn't work. Emoluments clause didn't work. Nothing works. They can't stop him. They can't remove him. You can only hope to contain him. That's like uh, with Jordan, or like you know, used to. Chris Berman used to say that ESPN. It's like unbelievable. The president had filed motions to dismiss the case on the grounds that the district in Maryland lacked standing and argued that he had not received em uh, emoluments as prohibited by the Constitution. It, it, look, it's, this is not like, this is not a bribe. You're not receiving a gift from a foreign dignitary. That's the whole point of the emoluments clause. So you're not bribed by, the guy is a billionaire. And they're like, well, he has business interests. He, he cares. He's losing money. He's losing money. The presidency is not lucrative to Trump. The presidency is actually the worst business decision he's ever made. You think that, like, I loved it when, like, people were like, Jared Kushner's using his post in the, in the, in the, in the White House to enrich himself. Like, really? <laughs> the media is like, their life's mission is to undermine, disparage, denigrate, the Trump White House. How do you, how do you, um, you know, turn that into like some kind of lucrative venture? I don't think that's the case. You know what I mean? So it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. The case is not the is not the only emoluments challenge. Okay, so. Trump tweeted Wednesday morning about the decision, writing, word just out, I want a big part of the deep state and Democratic-induced witch hunt. Unanimous decision in favor from the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit on the ridiculous emoluments case. I don't make money but lose a fortune for the honor of serving and doing a great job as president, including accepting zero salary. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, they cannot stop Trump. They cannot. They, they, they're so petulant. They're so, um, it's like people who devote their lives to being haters, people who devote their lives, people who devote their lives to trying to undermine, to trying to harm, to trying to disparage others, never work out. I have those haters. Believe me, it, it doesn't work out for them. It's never worked out for people who, who dislike me and they just write endlessly and it doesn't work out for them. And, and I, you know, I'm like a little tiny, tiny microscopic case of what Trump is. Trump is like, he has the entire United States media. He had corrupt intelligence officials, Peter Strzok, McCabe, Clapper, Brennan, Comey, um, you, he had the most powerful intelligence officials, all of media, the entire Democratic Party machine, Hollywood, Emoluments Clause didn't work out, Stormy didn't work out. Um, look where Avenatti is right now. Look where Avenatti is right now, okay? We can go on forever. What happens is they're set up by traps, their contempt undermines them. So, okay... 
Word just out, I want a, a big part of the deep state and Democratic-induced witch hunt. Unanimous decision in my favor for the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Cir- Circuit on the ridiculous Amal Eubens case. I don't make money, but lose a fortune. So here, uh, today's, t- Jay Sekulow, today's pair of decisions by the Fourth Circuit of Appeals is a complete victory, uh, he told uh, Reuters. The latest effort at presidential harassment has been dismissed with prejudice. They lost also on obstruction of justice. And now John Durham and William Barr will serve as the counterpunch. It's just unbelievable. They can't get him. It's just unbelievable. Emoluments clause. And then you go, yeah, AOC, you know, it's like a, the genius. Emoluments clause. It's like, he's losing money. It's not lucrative. It's not lucrative. There's no bribe here. If anything, who do you think didn't have a private jet? I didn't have, I didn't want to fly. I didn't want to fly Delta or, or American Airlines and uh so you know guess what I did? Yeah, guess what you did? The, okay, the people who need speaking fees, the people who need to scratch others uh, the backs of others to get their backs scratched. The people who need pay-to-play quid pro quo arrangements are two politicians who, you could look with Whitewater, who never had a a business or a business venture that worked out for them aside from a networking, speaking, philanthropic organization that was just purely pay-to-play, purely um, a a transaction based on political influence which is both Bill and Hillary. Their issues are based on political influence. Not Trump's. The emoluments clause related to, I mean, literally, they are getting gifts from, I mean, it was in the campaign emails, a million dollars from one country for like five or ten minutes of my time. So another another federal case that'll be struck down too is is, is still being consi- is still considering a lawsuit. Another federal court is still considering a lawsuit uh, brought by Democratic members of Congress. Well, that'll be struck down also. Another victory for Trump. This is a precedent. This is a legal precedent. Federal court rules for Trump. Court tosses suit alleging Trump violated the Constitution. So it's like, this is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I had one ready to go, the segment, and, and so I'm just re- doing this one. You'll see, you'll see my other segment, which is kind of funny, a little later. They try to get him. They try to frame him. They try to set him up. They try to sabotage his presidency. They try to remove him. They try to accuse him of everything under the sun. It doesn't work. Get over it. He has a personality. This is Democrats and people on the left. and He has a personality you don't like. Oh, well, he's this. No, he signed prison reform legislation. He signed prison reform legislation. He signed prison reform legislation. The economy is great. He met with, with Kim Jong-un, first president to visit North Korea. Get over his personality. Get over his personality. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment. 